Keith, uh, you uh, have, have played three games in about nine months. Now you're going to play three games in like four days. How's that transition going to, going to how do you see it uh, do, unfolding? So just for the record, uh, we will have played, right now we've played two games in, in 300 days. Crickets. <laughs> That's not many games, you know? <laughs> so I don't know. I just think, you know, we just got to be patient, you know, and we got to view it more like the preseason than the, you know, than the postseason or the regular season, you know, everybody, everybody's going to react a little differently to this. Like Fordham didn't react too well. If you saw their game, they, they, they struggled, but that doesn't mean we're going to struggle. I mean, everybody's different. What kind of sense are you getting from the guys at, at practice or how they're going to react to this? They've been pretty good, really. They're, you know, I kind of, I kind of like made this analogy. It's kind of like, you know, the first time we got on the bus was kind of like we, we asked, we asked a lady to marry us and she said, no, we got off the bus and then we, we flew all the way to the wedding site the next time to St. Louis and they, we were at, we were on the altar and she ran off the altar. So, I mean, one more rejection could be it for us. I think. What was that bus ride? Like uh, just, you know, coming home after traveling all the way out there to find out you can't play. Well, we flew back, but the, the, the crazy thing about the flight is we, we actually got the, the charter flight moved up and we had the pilots and everything, but we, we couldn't get security. So we had to wait till our regular time to come back. So we didn't get home till two in the morning. I mean, just one of, one of those years, New England's not in the playoffs, you know, uh, Kentucky's one in a hundred and we're just having a hard time of it. Keith, as you narrow down with games, how are you going to balance maybe managing minutes in a situation like this with trying to win the game? You've had dilemmas like this before, but how do you see it now? Well, we have to win the game. I mean, ultimately, our, you know, we, we have to win regard, regardless of the circumstances. And I, I've found in my career that a lot of times when you look long term and you do things for the long term, it helps your short term. So that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to look long term with the idea that it'll help us in the short term. What about the energy of practice? Have you seen it ratcheted up a little bit now that you're seeing some light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I think Jerry, that's probably the biggest juggling act that I've had to do is like, I've tried to cut it way back because I want to make sure that, you know, that they don't feel like they're going to practice every day for nothing. So, you know, I've tried to just get more done in a short time period and not practice as long and not make it drudgery. Otherwise, like, it doesn't matter. You can practice all you want, but if you're not emotionally engaged, you're not going to win. Do you believe they're emotionally engaged, Keith? I mean, I, I hope. I mean, it's I, – I don't know if you ever know that until you play the game and – and then now, now you not only do you have the emotional side, you have the physical side. Like, are we going to be able to play more than a good half or more than a good 10 minutes or more than a good 30 minutes? Like, it's hard to tell. It's hard to know. Th thank goodness we have pretty good depth, which should help us. But I don't think we could play just six, seven guys and think that we're in very good shape. I don't think that's, that's, that's possible at all. Keith, you mentioned that depth. Uh, do you think that you're going to be pretty sub-heavy heavy in the first half with the understanding that guys are probably going to be tired in the last 30 minutes or or you or 20 minutes? Or, or are you just going to sub equally throughout the game? So should I be truthful or should I? The answer is I don't really know. <laughs> I mean, this is uncharted waters for me too. Um, I do know this, that – with some of my teams in the past, when I played a short bench early in the year, it's cost us games at the end of the game. 
So we, the teams that are the freshest at the end of the game with the best players generally win at the end of the game. So my job is to make sure we get to the last four minutes with a chance to win the game and that we're fresh enough to win the game when it matters. How many, how many players do you see playing significant minutes? I don't know. Like, again, this is kind of a, normally I would tell you how many right now and on January one, I would know, but I really don't know. I'd say 10, 11, 12, 13, which usually isn't a very healthy answer to win games. That's too many. Keith, when was the last time you played a doubleheader as a, a, a kind of a back-to-back -back like this in, a, in this situation as a coach outside of tournament play? And just how do you, as an adjustment, how do you handle those kinds of adjustments that come with that? Well, I don't think it's – like we've played a lot of tournament. You know, like we played in the Bahamas and we played in Vegas and we've done it a lot. That's – normally it's not that big a deal. It's just – we're going to play a lot of games in a row without having played. That's a bigger deal. That's more of a concern than the actual playing of back-to-back -back games. Like normally we could play back-to-back -back games in our sleep, really. How important have guys like Hughes and, and Weathers and, and Sincere been veteran guys who keep helping keep the team together in these times? I mean, I think in some ways it's harder for them. Jerry, to be, to be frank, like, you know, they've been, you're talking about fifth year guys that have been through the grind of practice that really all they want to do is play games. They don't really want practice. <clears throat> right? Like, so, you know, to keep them motivated is really hard because, and, and we have four guys on our team that have already graduated college, you know? So like at some point, like how many times can you get jilted before you just say the heck with it? You know what I mean? Like, that's what I worry about. With GW, Keith, just what do you see from them and how hard maybe is it going to be to form a scout with them given how much they've played versus obviously how little, unfortunately, you guys have played? I mean, we know what they're going to do, Zach. Like, they're one of the best ball screen uh, variation teams in the country. Like, they, they put people all over the place in ball screens and make you rotate to their shooters and they put you in – ball screen after ball screen after ball screen in different spots. We know what they're going to do. Now their lineups changed because they had some guys leave, you know, the, the, the new state of college basketball is guys leave it in January now. So they've changed a little bit and they played a good game against Fordham. They, they actually played better against Fordham than they did when they had all their guys. So sometimes less is more, but I mean, they're going to do nothing that surprises us. How about that? Like we pretty much know now they, they've been a kind of a complex defensive team that have done a lot of different things, but we expect them to ice the ball screens on us. We expect them to double our post people. We expect them to come double when Marcus drives it. Uh, we expect, you know, at times maybe they'll throw a one, three, one zone or two, three zone. They didn't do that against Fordham, but they've shown it. They pressed. I mean, nothing they, nothing they do is really going to surprise us, really. Keith, is everybody on your team available to play? Everybody but Bacal just still. He has right. the, the stress fracture? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody else is available. We, and we, I think we're all negative. We just took, the, took another test today. So it looks like we're all negative again, so. You're taking tests daily, right, every day? We've taken them a lot. Like, I'd say probably 80, 85% of the day. Mm -hmm. so I give our school credit for that because they're they're expensive tests but we're doing the right thing so anything else out of curiosity Keith during any of these shutdowns has LeBron reached out to you just to tell you to stay the ship or have you asked him for advice at all I talked to LeBron uh, yesterday but not about that it was more about his crazy statistic that he just broke again that thousand games in a row of 10 points or more like that's a crazy number so we touch base on that but and he had a birthday so he's an old man now I knew him when he was 13 he's 36 so how do you think that makes me feel
<laughs> 36, my God. Still going strong, though. Give him credit. You didn't talk. Did, you didn't talk basketball at all with him. Did Duquesne basketball? Or you, you didn't. No, have to listen. Play? Listen. He he's got enough on his plate, right? Um. Basically, just congratulated him on his, you know, new new statistical. It's something new statistically with him every day. So, Jared, how you doing? You feeling good? He's still muted. All right. Well, at least I'm good at, at lip reading. All right. You guys be good. All right. <laughs>